Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ivan, my alias is DreamFramer, and today we are talking about sharpening in photography. A very important lesson in general, but super important if you are selling your photos online. One of the main reasons why photos don't get accepted for sale is either if they are not sharp enough or they are over sharpened. So you have to learn what is the right amount of sharpening that you want to apply to your images. There are many ways to sharpen your images in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you four best ways and I can promise you these four methods are going to be all you need to know about sharpening. I also want to remind you to like this video, to make a comment or subscribe, especially if you're planning on selling your photos online, because I'm making a series of videos that are going to be the most detailed guide on YouTube on how to sell your photos online. Now let's move to an example. We have a photo of a meerkat sitting on the rock. I took this picture a while ago and this is a perfect picture for this tutorial because as you can see we have a lot of details in the fur. Uh, his face is pretty much in focus but the focus can be improved a little bit. So we're gonna make the eyes and uh, some other features sharper. And also aside from this there is some noise in the background. Uh, which is also important when uh, you think about sharpening because when you sharpen the whole image you're also increasing the level of noise in the areas where there is noise already. So you have to be careful with any of the sharpening methods. You have to think about the noise in the background as well. Let me show you the first method for sharpening. Uh, this method works really well when you have smaller areas to sharpen, like for example the face and the fur of this meerkat. And uh, we're going to use a sharpen tool for this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is of course copying the background layer. I'm going to drag it down to a new layer icon and make a background copy layer. Let me show you first how not to do this, because many people make this mistake. I'm just going to grab my sharpen tool, go to tool options, and um, I'm going to leave uh, mode to normal and change the strength to about 50 percent, 50 something percent. And now I'm going to go down and just paint uh, while the top layer is active, paint over Meerkat's face and, um, and the fur. And let's see what's happening. So you can see that we are increasing the sharpness. We're getting some more definition in this fur, right? The more you paint, the more of this you get. Now you're gonna probably ask me what's wrong with this method. The wrong thing is that by doing this you are changing the information on the top layer. You're basically destroying the top layer and uh, you always want to try to use non-destructive methods in photo editing. So I'm gonna undo this by clicking Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac and I'm gonna create a new layer by clicking a new layer icon. We have this top layer now, it's completely empty as you can see and we want to work in this layer but somehow get the information from the layer below. If I just use sharpen tool as before on this empty layer, nothing's gonna happen. I can paint and paint and as you can see the picture is not changing. But that's why we have this sample all layers checkbox on the top in uh, sharpen tool options. If you click that the Photoshop will get the information from the layers below and apply them in the top layer that is currently empty. That way we are not going to destroy this background copy layer. We are just going to make a new layer and let's see what's happening. You can clearly see that we get that sharpening effect that we had before, but this way we are not destroying any of the layers below. I can show you that by turning off these two layers and now you can see only the top layer. So this is basically just what we did and we can always delete this layer, change the opacity, you see before and after. To adjust the effect further you can always uh, change the opacity of this top layer. Let me show you. For example, if I think that I overdid it I can always uh, go to the opacity and change the opacity of this top layer and adjust the strength of the effect. There is one thing you want to avoid when you use this tool and that is trying to sharpen the areas like this one where you don't have enough details. 
if you try to paint over that with a sharpen tool you're gonna get this nasty pixelation effect and of course this looks really bad so you don't want it in your pictures right now I can go all over the fur sharpen it more maybe adjust the opacity a little bit and if I'm happy how the picture looks like I can just save it so this was the first method I'm gonna delete the top layer and show you the second method that I use more uh, the second method of sharpening involves Unsharp Mask. Unsharp Mask is a filter in Photoshop and it sharpens the whole image. So this is not selective sharpening like this first method. But there is a way to turn it into a selective method. So first let's sharpen the whole image. I'm clicking on the filter, going to sharpen and I'm gonna click Unsharp Mask. We have this small preview here but actually you will see what's going on on the picture as well. So I'm gonna zoom my picture to 100% and drag it down to see Meerkat's head. And uh, now we have these three sliders here. The first slider says amount. This is the amount of sharpening. Of course, the more you push it to the right, there's gonna be more sharpening. If you push it to the left, there's gonna be less sharpening. I usually keep this slider around 100% so I can see what's going on with the picture when I'm moving these two other sliders. But for this tutorial I'm gonna increase this to about 179 so you can see better. The radius, the second slider, tells Photoshop how big are the details that I want to sharpen. If you push this slider too much to the right you're gonna get this ugly effect so you usually want to keep it very low around one pixel maybe 0.5 to 1.5 and that should give you the best result so uh, let me move back this letter to the left around let's say 1.1 0.7 you need to move this letter a little bit left and right to find the best spot because this uh, spot will be <laughs> different for every picture. Now the threshold. The threshold you usually keep at zero because if you increase it then you're losing this sharpening effect. You usually want to keep it at zero or very close to zero to get sharpening on the whole image. Let me just increase the radius to 0 0.9 maybe and then I'm gonna click OK. So if I turn off this top layer you can see before and after and you can clearly see that we increased the sharpness. However we also increased noise unfortunately. You can see it clearly in these dark areas here. When I turn off this layer there's gonna be less noise. If I turn it on back then you can see there is more noise. So how can I fix that? I'm just gonna leave the top layer active and click layer mask and we made uh, a layer mask. I'm gonna invert it now by clicking Ctrl I or Command I on the Mac. So now we have this black mask that completely covers the top layer, the layer with the sharpened image. Now while the layer mask in top layer is active, I'm gonna use brush tool and white paint. I'm gonna leave the opacity for brush tool at 100% and I'm gonna paint over these areas where I want sharpening effect to take place. So I'm painting over the face and the fur. The effect is really subtle, but that's the goal. As I mentioned before, you don't want to over sharpen the image because especially if you want to sell the image online, the image can get rejected if it's over sharpened. You're gonna see that there is a change when I turn off the top layer and you can see before and after. This looks good to me now. So now pay attention on this area where we have noise. If I switch on or switch off the top layer that area is not changing. And if you look at Meerkat's face you can actually see the change. When I switch on or switch off the layer we have sharpness coming back or going away. Right? So this is how we applied global sharpening and then used uh, layer mask to make it selective. 
This was the second sharpening method that I wanted to show you, sharpening with unsharp mask. And now let's move to the third method. For this method, we're going to use another filter. The filter is called high pass filter. So let me copy the background layer again. I'm going to drag it down to new layer icon and make a background copy. And now I want to convert this background copy layer into black and white. And I'm going to explain to you why. This is kind of a secret step that most Photoshop tutorials that explain this method don't include. This method finds the edges of objects on the picture and increases the contrast around them. However, this method also increases the contrast between the colors. So if you have any color aberration or any kind of color distortion, that's going to be more visible if you apply this sharpening method. And that's not a good thing. We just want to increase the contrast between light and dark tones and not affect the color. So that's why I'm going to convert this top layer into black and white. The easiest method to do that is to go and click the image, adjustments, and just choose black and white. I'm going to leave all these sliders to default and just click OK. And as you can see now, our top layer is black and white and the layer underneath is of course in color. So now, with this top layer active, I'm going to go to Filter, Other and click High Pass. Again, we have the preview, but we also see everything in our main window. We have just one slider here and it says Radius. It's very similar to radius of sharpening in that second method that I mentioned before. It tells Photoshop how big are the details where it needs to apply sharpening. It's usually good to keep this very low, under one pixel, maybe around one pixel or something like that, just to barely see the details that you want to sharpen. In some cases you can bring this up to two or three pixels, but uh, if you go too high, the picture becomes unusable, like for example, I don't know, 40 pixels, you can see the whole picture, you just want to see those edges. So something probably around one pixel is okay, I'm gonna click OK. And now I'm gonna change the blending mode for this layer to one of the options between overlay, soft light or linear light. Overlay gives you some contrast, some sharpness. Soft light gives you less. Linear light gives you more. I usually use linear light. But let's try overlay first. Let's compare before and after while the top layer is in overlay blending mode. If I turn it off, you can see that the picture is a little bit softer. If I turn it on again, we get some sharpness. But I would like to see this sharpen more so I'm gonna switch to linear light and now you can see the difference right uh, Mirkat's face looks much sharper than before I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to 100% because that was 200% uh, reviewers in stock agencies are not gonna review your pictures at 200% I'm decreasing the opacity of the top layer just to find the right spot where I'm happy with the strength of the filter switching off switching on before and after looks good to me. Now this method affects the whole image just like the previous method and it also increases the noise. You can see that when I switch on and switch off this top layer. To fix this I'm gonna do the same thing as in the previous method. I'm gonna click on the layer mask and then Control I or Command I on Mac to invert the mask to black and then use white brush of course while the mask is active and paint over Mirkat's face with the white brush the fur and all the areas where we want sharpening to be applied in the meantime the background the noisy areas will not be affected by this because the mask is protecting those and, of course, I'm gonna do this quickly uh, because this is just a tutorial. You can pay more attention when you do this. 
Now let's see before and after. If I switch off the top layer, you can see that we actually added some sharpness to Meerkat. So this was the third method and now let me show you the fourth method of sharpening. For this we're gonna just use a camera raw filter. I'm gonna make a copy of background layer and go to camera raw filter in the filter menu. If you don't use Photoshop CC you will have to open the image in camera raw software and to do this you have to go to file open as choose your picture I'm just gonna click any picture now and over here just choose camera raw but since I'm using Photoshop CC I'm just gonna go to my filter menu and click camera raw filter the picture will be imported into camera raw now and the first thing I want to do is of course to zoom to 100% so I'm sure that I'm seeing what I'm doing we have uh, this uh, third tab here, it's called Detail and it contains Sharpening and Noise Reduction sections. So now first let's use Sharpening section. This is going to be similar to Unsharp Mask, the second method that I mentioned. We have a mount slider where of course we increase the amount of sharpening as we are dragging the slider to the right. And you want to keep this slider around 100% so you see what's going on with the picture while you're dragging these other sliders. The radius is similar to radius in Unsharp Mask. You are basically telling Photoshop, actually Camera Raw, how big are the details that you want to sharpen. I usually keep this between 0.5 and uh, 1.5 pixels. If you push it too much to the right, you can see how the fur became kind of thick and uh, we actually kind of lose details so I'm gonna keep this around one pixel I want to add some more details and I'm gonna do that by using detail slider this detail slider should be kept pretty low because if you push it too much to the right the picture is gonna become unnaturally sharp and the noise in the background will become too visible just look at all that noise in these shadow areas so I'm gonna pull back this to about maybe 21 percent and this looks good but mind you these values will be different for every picture now we still have some noise in the background and for this we have this fourth slider that is called masking uh, this slider recognizes the, the edges, the details, and it leaves sharpening on them, but at the same time applies a mask on the areas that should not be sharpened, at least what Camera Raw thinks should not be sharpened. These blurry areas, for example, should not be sharpened. And if I push this slider completely to the right, you can see that the noise is disappearing from the background. I'm gonna zoom more so you can see better. If I pull it back to zero, the noise is coming back. Pay attention at the background. You see how the noise came back? So one would think that pushing this slider completely to the right will fix the problem with noise, but that's actually not true. It's not true because now you have these areas that are sharpened and you have the areas where the sharpening is hidden and the software is trying to decide where is the edge between the sharpened and protected area so if you push the slider too much to the right that edge can become visible and it looks like pixelation like some kind of artifacts around uh, meerkat's head for example uh, you can see that only if you zoom so be sure to zoom to at least 100% to check on it. That's why I like to keep this slider pretty low. I'm gonna leave it here and I'm gonna reduce the noise more with this noise reduction section. Now I'm not gonna talk a lot about noise reduction here because I made a video on that and you can find it in uh, both my playlists Photoshop tutorials and how to sell your photos online. 
so right now I'm just gonna move these sliders a little bit to try to find the sweet spot for this picture and uh, reduce some noise in the background and when I'm done with it I'm just gonna click OK and the picture will be exported to Photoshop again I'm gonna zoom to 100% so you can see what's going on you can see how Camera Raw does a very good job with sharpening I can switch off the top layer and you can see before and after when I switch off the top layer we lose the sharpness when I switch it on we have the sharpness back while the noise in the background is not changing at all this is a very good and very quick sharpening method and I use it all the time for all my pictures that I sell online there is one more thing that I want to mention you can apply sharpening at any step of the editing process but most people apply it at the end when they're done with all other filters I usually open the image in camera raw apply some sharpening then I edit the picture in Photoshop and in the end if I think more sharpening would benefit then I sharpen the image a little bit more I hope you liked this video, if you did press that like button, make a comment or subscribe if you still didn't. Your reactions motivate me to make more videos like this. You can also contact me with any questions and I'm gonna do my best to answer them all. That was all for today, see you in the next video, bye.